I'm going to take just a quick look at the difference between heart rate and VO2, which is otherwise known as oxygen uptake or oxygen consumption. So firstly, there's a little definition there for each of them. Heart rate, the number of times the heart pumps or beats per minute. There's a linear relationship with exercise intensity. So as we increase in intensity, our demand for oxygen and therefore for blood increases and therefore our heart rate increases. And that's linear, which is a straight line relationship. VO2, and I've got their oxygen consumption or oxygen uptake, you might also see it written as. It's measured in a volume and it's the volume of oxygen utilized per minute. There's two different ways we can measure VO2. We can measure it in a relative way, which is measured in milliliters per kilogram per minute, or an absolute, which is measured in liters per minute. This too has a linear relationship with exercise intensity. And this particular example you can see below. On the axes, the x-axis, we've got speed, so that reflects intensity, that increases, and if you just look at that top line, the linear line, that exercise, as intensity of exercise increases, the volume of oxygen, that's an absolute volume of oxygen, a VO2, that increases in a linear relationship. You'll notice that there's a peak and even a little drop off at the end, and you'll know that that's because the athlete has reached VO2 max at that particular point in time. So what I want to do is I want to take these concepts of heart rate and VO2 and I want to look at it from a percentage perspective. So when you're working at a percentage of your maximum heart rate, what percentage of your VO2 max are you working at? Because VCAR like to ask you questions and they manipulate those questions with regards to heart rate or VO2. So let's have a look and let's have a comparison. Firstly, what I've got here is I've got a practical example of an incremental treadmill test. The stage, as that number goes up, that means that the intensity goes up. And the intensity goes up either with speed or with gradient. And you can see the relative VO2 increases, and you can see those numbers increase. If you were to plot that, it would be a relatively straight line, a linear relationship with exercise intensity, and likewise with heart rate, you can see that there. So as exercise intensity, VO2 increases, and heart rate increases also. So that's just a little practical example before we go further. So what we wanted to look at, this has just been taken from our textbook, is we've got an example of intensity. And I don't want you to look at everything in this particular table, but what I want you to look at just on the far left, um, the first column is training zone. And you might see that written as T zone as well, just refers to training zone. They've got four here. You might see different, and I'm going to show you an example shortly that has five different training zones there. But what I want you to look at um, are just the definitions of each of them. So recovery, when you're not going to have very many adaptations, when you're working aerobically or predominantly aerobically and you're going to get aerobic adaptations, lactate inflection point is where you're working at with that zone there and then predominantly anaerobic at that top intensity. And note that they have used the term lactic acid for energy system. So just remember that it's always going to be the anaerobic glycolysis system for your exam. But what I really want you to focus on are the next two columns, percentage of max heart rate and percentage of VO2 max. And just have a little bit of a look there as you scan down and note that there's a little bit of a difference. And we'll refer specifically to the second column there. So percentage of max heart rate and percentage of VO2 max, you can see there is a difference and VO2 max sits a little bit below heart rate max. So if you're working at 70% of your heart rate max, you're only going to be working at about 55% of your VO2 max there. So what we want to do now is we want to have a look at um, some other examples of some T zones and then we want to make that into an applied type setting. And look, just before we go th there, the reason why they've got a, a range of values is to reflect the different fitness uh, levels as well. Because if we look at lactate inflection point, someone who's not very fit is going to have a lower um, maximum that they can hold. So they might even have lower than what we've got here in terms of percentage heart rate and percentage VO2. But someone who's holding their at 85% of their max heart rate will only be holding 75% of their VO2 max. So try and align um, the lower level and the top level um, there. But particularly, we'll talk about those two um, those two values. So, all right, this is um, where I dissect the data a little bit. So what I've done is I've taken those four zones that we just looked at before, recovery, aerobic, lactate inflection point, and then um, above lactate inflection point, predominantly anaerobic, or in this particular case for an incremental test, uh, it's going to be above lactate inflection point. The anaerobic systems will uh, increase their contribution, but for this particular one, the aerobic system is always going to be um, dominant. 
So what we've got here with our stage one and stage two, that's predominantly recovery stage. And then we move into our aerobic training stage, which is reflected by the yellow. And then what you'll see is you'll see this orange stage here. So what I've done is I've worked out for that bottom orange stage, the percentage of max heart rate and then the percentage of VO2 max. And what you will see is that it works pretty nicely with the values that we've been looking at at 163 beats per minute for a heart rate, that's working at 84% of heart rate max. And 47.51 is approximately 75% of VO2 max. So if we go back to our value here, and if we go back to that lactate inflection point, and look at those values there, percentage of max heart rate at lactate inflection point, 85% and the percentage of VO2 max, 75%. So what a great example we've got there of those two occurring at the same time and at around lactate inflection point. I'm gonna show you some other T zones here. And what I want you to look at is I want you to have a look at the VO2 max percentage and the heart rate max percentage and just identify which zone or which zones lactate inflection point occur within. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds to have a think about that. So if you said zone two or T2, uh, or T3, you would be correct. And we know that because of those percentages that I just showed you before. If we're taking 85% of max heart rate as being lactate inflection point, that will occur at the top of T2 or at the bottom of T3. Similarly, if we're taking 75% to be lactate inflection point for VO2, we're looking at the top end of T2 and the bottom end of T3. So here's a question for you. If you are a trained athlete, would you more likely fit into T2 or T3 as your lactate inflection point? So what that means is that are you going to be able to hold T2 for let's say 30 to 90 minutes, or are you gonna be able to hold T3 for 30 to 90 minutes? Depend if you're a more trained athlete, what do you think? The answer will be T3. So if you're fitter, you're gonna have a higher lactate inflection point or a delayed lactate inflection point. You're going to be able to work at a higher percentage of your max heart rate at a higher percentage of your VO2 max steadily. You're gonna be able to hold that. Your lactate production will be matched by lactate clearance, and you're gonna be able to hold that. And as I said before, lactate inflection point, you could hold for between 30 to 90 minutes, depending on what sort of training you've done and how used to it you are. So let's have a look at the sort of question they might give you here. As part of the Australian national record holders training for the 100 meter freestyle, the swimmer trains at 75 to 90% of VO2 max. So what we wanna do is, and sometimes they put um, heart rate max, and most of the time they put heart rate max, but this question tricked people up because suddenly they started talking about VO2 max. So what we need to do is we need to be able to align the two and work out um, how that's going to um, contribute to energy production. So if we go back and we have a look at those T zones, if we're looking at again 75 to 90% of VO2 max, we're looking at somewhere between T3 and right up to T5. And if you compare that to the heart rate, that is going to be over 85% of max heart rate. Now, if we know that lactate inflection point occurs around 85% of max heart rate, there's no way that the athlete is gonna be able to hold above 85% of the max heart rate in a steady state. Anaerobic system will be producing lactic acid and the associated hydrogens at a faster rate than, which, than with which they can be removed. So if we go back to this question, discuss why the 100 meter swimmer trains at this intensity and how this intensity affects performance and blood lactate levels, we should be looking at it being specific to the event firstly. And then in terms of it affecting performance or blood lactate levels, it's gonna be training with an increased contribution from the anaerobic system. Therefore, the athlete's gonna be able to or develop adaptations that are specific to the anaerobic systems. The athlete's gonna be able to work at a higher intensity for longer and it's also gonna be able to deal with or tolerate those really high blood lactate levels. Because they're working above lactate inflection point, blood lactate isn't gonna be stable, it's gonna be well above what you can hold, um, and so therefore it's gonna accumulate, but the athlete will be able to learn to tolerate it, to deal with those feelings, because they're training specifically at the intensity um, required for that particular event.
So if you go back and have another look, and you might need to go back through each of these slides because I've gone through it reasonably quickly um, and have a look and have a really good analysis of um, the zones and have a good analysis of the difference between VO2 max versus heart rate max. And basically the difference is that the VO2 max is always going to be below heart rate max. And it can be around 8%. We've probably seen there's a few different numbers here that I've shown you. But if you think around a 5, 8, maybe even 10% difference, then you're on the money for sure. So VO2 max, the percentage of VO2 max is always going to be a little bit below heart rate max. And if we just go back to this table, that's the table that I'm going to leave you with there. And if you look at stage 8, 84% of heart rate max, 75% of VO2 max. So there's a difference there. Hope that helped.